Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. So welcome back and this is lecture number 40 and we will be talking about the linear independence of vectors. In particular, we will cover today the linear combinations of the vectors and also this linear independence of, of vectors. So, what is linear combination? So, an expression of this type lambda 1 uh, v 1 plus lambda 2 v 2 uh, plus lambda n v n where these lambdas belongs to the set of real numbers is called linear combination of vectors v 1, v 2, v 3 and v n. So, here uh, for given vectors this v 1, v 2, v n uh, this expression here lambda 1, v 1 plus lambda 2, v 2 and so on lambda n, v n this is called the linear combination of these vectors where these lambdas uh, belongs to uh, the set of real numbers. And uh, just a remark, a short remarks here. So, V belongs to a vector space over R, uh, which is V is a vector space and V uh, small v is an, an event of this vector space V. Uh, this is a linear combination of V1, V2, V3, Vn in V. So, these all are vectors in V and we call that this V is a linear combination of V1, V2, V3, Vn. Uh, if there exists, scalars lambda 1, lambda 2, lambda 3, lambda n uh, and they belongs to R because we, we as are the scalars uh, such that we can write down this V here the given V as a linear combination of the others. Then we call that this V is a linear combination of the, uh, the vectors V 1, V 2, V 3, V n. If we can write down this V uh, as lambda 1 v 1 plus lambda 2 v 2 plus lambda n v n, then we call this vector v, uh, which is uh, again this vector is a more general term we are talking about from the vector space. They can be matrices, they can be polynomial, etcetera. So, here if this given v here we can write down as a linear combination of these other vectors v's, then we call that this is a linear combination of the vectors v 1, v 2, v 3, v n. So, the example here we take uh, these four vectors uh, uh, alpha, beta, gamma and delta. So, here 4, 3, 5 this transpose. So, we have this uh, uh, column vector here also we have 0, 1, 3 and 2, 1, 1 and 4, uh, 2, 2. Now, we have the following questions now we want to examine whether this alpha is a linear combination of beta and gamma. We will also see that uh, if uh, this beta is a linear combination of uh, uh, gamma and this delta and this uh, gamma is a linear combination of alpha and beta. So, we will answer these questions here. To answer the first one, if this alpha is a linear combination of beta and gamma. So, what we want to show that this alpha here, this is alpha is a linear combination of uh, of the beta and gamma. So, this is beta and then here we have gamma. So, if we can write down this alpha as lambda 1 beta plus lambda 2 gamma for some uh, lambdas, then we will call uh, yes this alpha is a linear combination of beta and gamma. So, now to do so, we will check whether it is possible or not and uh, eventually we end up usually with the system of linear equations to answer all these questions and we have to solve this uh, system of uh, linear equations which uh, we can write down like uh, again we can simplify this little bit. So, left hand side we have 4, we have 3, we have 5 that is a vector. The right hand side the first equation if we write down lambda 1 times 0 plus uh, uh, this lambda 2 uh, times 2. So, we have basically 2 times lambda 2. The second equation will be lambda 1 plus this lambda 2 and then we have 3 lambda 1 
and plus lambda 2. So, these are the equations. The first equation says that 2 lambda 2 is equal to 4. So, where we get the lambda 2 is equal to 2. From this second equation then, because they should add to this 3 and lambda 2 is already 2. So, from here we will get that lambda 1 must be 1 and this 3 lambda 1 plus lambda 2 uh, is equal to 5. So, whether now we have to check whether it is also satisfied or not. So, 3 times this lambda 1 and plus this lambda 2 and this will give us 5. So, the third equation is also satisfied. So, for this lambda 1 is equal to 1 and lambda uh, lambda 2 is equal to 2, uh, this relation is satisfied. That means, we have this alpha is equal to lambda 1 is 1. So, uh, beta and plus this lambda 2 is 2. 2 gamma. So, we have this relation between the alpha, beta and gamma. Alpha is equal to beta plus 2 times the gamma. So, naturally uh, this alpha is a linear combination of is a linear combination of beta and and gamma which we have seen in, in this uh, example. Now, we will check for the second one that uh, if this beta is a linear combination of gamma and delta. So, what is beta 0 1 3 this is the vector beta and then lambda 1 times 2 1 1 and lambda 2 times 4 2 2. So, we want to check whether such lambdas exist so that we can write down this beta as a linear combination of gamma and delta. And now to check this, this is uh, quite obvious here if we uh, just again write down in terms of the equations. So, the first equation is like 2 lambda 1 plus this 4 times this lambda 2 is equal to 0. The second equation is lambda 1 2 lambda 2 must be equal to 1 and the third equation is lambda 1 plus 2 lambda 2 is equal to 3. So, this equation 2 and 3 they tells us that lambda 1 plus 2 lambda 2 is equal to 1 and lambda 1 plus 2 lambda 2 is equal to 3. So, here uh, there is inconsistency because lambda 1 plus 2 lambda 2 this equation tells must be 1, but this tells that this must be 3. So, it, it is not possible to find such lambdas uh, which satisfy these two equations here forget about the first one. So, here definitely then we cannot find such lambdas which can satisfy this relation here that beta is equal to this lambda 1 gamma plus lambda 2 gamma uh, lambda 2 delta. So, so what, what do we get now? So, that means this beta uh, is not a linear combination of, of these two uh, uh, elements here gamma and delta. So, this is an inconsistent system and it has no solution and therefore, uh, beta is not a linear combination of, of gamma and uh, delta. Now, coming to the third one here, gamma is a linear combination of alpha and beta. We have just seen in this case 1 here that uh, this was alpha here and then we had a beta and we have gamma. That alpha uh, is a linear combination of this beta and gamma and this was the relation alpha is equal to beta plus 2 gamma and now we are asking whether uh, gamma is a linear combination of alpha and beta. So, naturally gamma is a linear combination of alpha and beta and we do not have to, to prove anything because in the, f uh, in the first part we have already shown this relation that alpha is equal to beta plus this 2 gamma and then we have naturally that the gamma is equal to 1 half of alpha minus beta. So, this uh, gamma is a linear combination of alpha and beta which uh, is, is trivial uh, from this uh, part 1 of this problem. Okay, well, so now going to the next uh, topic here, uh, we will be talking about linear independence of vectors and what do we have here. So, V is a vector space we take and then a finite uh, set of vectors. So, V 1, V 2, V 3, V n of this vector space V. Uh, this is set to be linearly independent. So, this set here of vectors is set to be linearly independent if this relation here lambda 1 v 1 plus lambda 2 v 2 and so on lambda n v n is equal to 0 implies 
that this is only possible when all these lambdas are 0. Otherwise, we do not have any other lambdas which can make this linear combination uh, to 0. So, uh, these lambdas are, are scalars. So, now we can investigate again here the linear independence of, of these given vectors which are uh, given here. So, what do we have to check for this linear independence that if this linear combination which is given lambda 1 v 1 plus lambda 2 v 2 lambda n v n is equal to 0. After solving these equations, if we get the only solution as lambda 1 is equal to lambda 2 is equal to lambda n is equal to 0 then we call that these uh, this set is linearly independent, but if we get some other solution of the lambdas non zero solution then they will be dependent yeah. So, they are not uh, independent in that case. So, let us uh, consider this example. So, here we have taken these three vectors 1 minus 1 0, 0 1 minus 1 and this third is 0 0 1. So, we will consider now uh, this expression lambda 1 v 1 plus lambda 2 v 2 plus lambda 3 v 3 is equal to this 0 vector. And now, from here we will get basically the equations because uh, we have this lambda 1 uh, times this v 1. So, 1 minus 1 0 here we have lambda 2 the, the, the v 2 minus 1 and then we have also this lambda 3 uh, 0 0 1 and the right hand side the 0 vector. So, now this comparing the each component. So, the first equation we will get as lambda 1 is equal to 0 which is already lambda 1 here when we add these 3 we will get lambda 1 we will get minus lambda 1 plus lambda 2 and the third one we will get here minus lambda 2 and plus lambda 3 minus lambda 2 plus lambda 3 and is equal to the right hand side is the 0 vector. So, we have the 0 comma 0 comma 0. And now, from here we get actually three equations and after solving these equations we will uh, we will see whether uh, we are getting a unique solution as uh, in terms of lambda and the unique solution will be naturally the 0 0 0 because uh, that is always the case here when we have uh, such a system uh, with lambda 1 v 1 plus lambda 2 v 2 lambda 3 is equal to 0. So, naturally all uh, uh, the trivial solution what we call here is, is 0 0 0 for lambdas, but we will see whether we have some non trivial solution or not. If we have only the trivial solution that is uh, the 0 solution then we call that they are linearly independent. So, here what we will observe because the first equation itself tells you the lambda 1 is equal to 0 when lambda 1 0 the lambda 2 is equal to 0 that is coming from the second equation and from third equation when lambda 2 0 we are getting also lambda 3 is equal to 0. So, that is the only possibility we are getting here that is a unique solution we can also uh, in general we will write down in, in the form of this uh, augmented matrix and then uh, reducing to this rho echelon form from there also we can observe whether we are getting a unique solution or we are getting infinitely many solutions or this is the uh, this cannot be the case of no solution naturally because this is always a system of this homogeneous equation which always has at least a trivial solution. So, here we have seen that these uh, vectors are linearly independent and we will check now the second example which uh, says that v 1 is equal to 0 comma 0 v 2 uh, 1 comma 2 are linearly independent. And this is a, a, a trivial task to check whenever we have uh, this uh, 0 vector uh, is, is there in the set because we can always consider uh, this equality lambda 1 as 0 0 lambda 2 1 2 is equal to 0 0 and since the 0 vector is there. So, I can take any lambda here it does not matter I can take any lambda with this and then the 0 value to lambda 2 and the equation will be satisfied because with this 0 we have now the 0 vector here and I can choose any lambda is still this will be a 0 vector and 0 plus 0 vector will give us 0 vector. So, for all lambda 1 from this uh, set of real numbers this equation is satisfied 
and therefore we are getting a non-zero solution. We are, our lambdas are not zero in in this case, but they are uh, we are getting finitely many possibilities which which are adding to this zero here, and therefore this set is is linearly uh, dependent. So whenever we have a zero vector included in the set of these vectors, then uh, these vectors are going to be linearly uh, dependent. So, this 0 is one of the vectors in the set and then the set must be linearly uh, dependent and this problem 3, we examine these vectors 1 1 1 and 1 1 0 1 0 0 and we have 1 0 1 are linearly independent. So, we have taken these 4 vectors now and we want to check whether they are linearly independent or they are linearly dependent. The same process we will uh, continue now. So, we will consider this linear combination here and that will be set to 0. So, we have lambda 1 v 1 plus lambda 2 v 2 plus lambda 3 v 3 plus this lambda 4 v 4 is equal to 0 and this will imply. So, we have to now form these equations here lambda 1 is multiplied to the first vector here to the second vector and so on and we will now set it to 0. So, out of this we will get uh, the, the, the equations here the 3 equations because here the lambda 1 is multiplied by this 1 1 0 and the lambda 2 is multiplied with 1 0 0 lambda 3 is multiplied by 1 0 uh, 0. Now, this is 1 1 1 then the second is 1 1 0 third one is 1 0 0 and this fourth one is 1 0 1. So, these are the and now the right hand side again this 0 vector. So, from here we will get the first equation as lambda 1 plus lambda 2 plus lambda 3 plus lambda 4 is equal to 0 that is the first equation here. The second one I have lambda 1 plus this lambda 2 and here there is no component. So, this is equal to 0 and the fourth equation the third equation will be lambda 1 from here and lambda 4 from here is equal to 0. So, we have these uh, 3 equations coming out of uh, this linear combination because there were 3 components in each uh, vectors. So, having this now this uh, system of equations which we want to solve for, for lambdas the general way uh, would be always to, to write down in, in the form of this augmented matrix and then uh, do this uh, uh, elimination or reduce to this row echelon form and from there the situation will be clear whether we are getting unique solution or we are getting non-unique solution. So, here for this system of equations we have written here uh, this uh, augmented matrix. So, the coefficient matrix here 1, 1, 1 and 1 from the second equation we will get 1, 1 and 0, 0 from this 1 and this last component 1 in the middle we will be having 0. The right hand side the 0 vector which we have kept here the 0 vector and then we can reduce it to the echelon form which is uh, very uh, simple in this case because this first row will remain as it is from second now our aim is to make this 0. So, we will subtract the row number 1. So, this r 1 uh, will be r 1 minus uh, sorry r 2 will become now r 2 minus r 1. So, this is 0 here 0 we will get minus 1 minus 1 and 0 here again we will subtract uh, r 3 minus this r 1 again. So, here we will get 0 and this will be minus 1 this will be minus 1 this will be 0 0. So, this and now we can interchange the row uh, number 2 and 3 and we will get exactly this uh, uh, echelon form. So, having this echelon form now row reduced echelon form we can uh, now look into it whether what kind of solutions are we getting. So, uh, looking at this, so this is the pivot here, here also we have the pivot, the second column has the pivot, the third column also has uh, the pivot and the fourth column does not have a pivot because this cannot be pivot because uh, there is a non-zero quantity sitting left to this. So, here that is what we call and uh, if you remember already from our previous lectures, this is uh, corresponding to lambda 4 and which we call the free variables. Uh, free variable in this case only one and these are the dependent variables lambda 1, lambda 2, lambda 3. So, this 
having a free variable in the in the solution in the system here we are naturally getting infinitely uh, many possibilities of the solution now and once we have infinitely many uh, possibilities of the solution that system cannot be uh, linearly independent because we do not have on the unique solution which is lambda 1 uh, all these lambdas to be equal to 0. So, in this case we have now the so many solutions infinitely many solutions because this lambda 4 is a free variable and we can choose anything we want. So, lambda 4 for instance we have taken as 1 and then from this equation we can get this lambda 3 as minus 1 from the second equation lambda 2 and from this first equation we can uh, get lambda 1 as minus 1. So, we are getting for this choice of this uh, lambda 4 all other lambdas here lambda 3 is minus 1, lambda 2 is 1 and lambda 1 is minus 1. So, that means we are getting this relation here. So, naturally they are dependent they are not independent and they depend on each other with this relation. So, this given set of vectors here is uh, linearly uh, dependent. So, the another problem here we will examine now this set 2 1 1 and 1 2 2 and 1 1 1 whether it is linearly independent or it is linearly dependent. So, just getting back to the previous one what we have uh, it is a similar uh, problem. So, we had the four vectors here and our uh, augmented matrix was having these columns here uh, all these vectors were the, the columns here 1 1 1 this was 1 1 0. So, we kept all these in, in the columns here and the right hand side this b is, is always 0 we can uh, we do not have to write also this 0 0 0 always because that is not going to change. So, we can just work with the a itself and get the uh, row reduce this echelon form and from there we can conclude uh, the the existence of the solution. So, here now getting back to this one uh, the new problem we have these three vectors and we want to check the linear uh, independence of these vectors. So, what do we consider? We consider directly the uh, augmented matrix which we have earlier formed through the system of linear equations. So, here the each uh, vector will be a column. So, 2 1 1 and then we have 1 2 2 and then the third one we have 1 1 1 and the right hand side uh, again uh, 0. So, now we will reduce this to this uh, reduced echelon form which is uh, much easier in this case as we see 1 2 1 and this 1 2 1 these are the same. So, one of them will, will become immediately uh, 0 here and then from the equation number 1 we can also reduce uh, the equation number 2. So, we will get finally this row reduced uh, echelon form and where now we have this is the pivot element and this is the pivot element and this third column uh, will not have a pivot element. So, we have these two pivot elements here this is the 0 rows and what we conclude now. So, we have the free variable we have the free variable this lambda 3 corresponding to the column 3 is a free variable and which we can choose whatever we like. So, just for the sake of simplicity of the calculation we have taken lambda 3 is equal to minus 3 and then uh, this lambda 2 and lambda 1 from this equation number 2 and from the equation number uh, 1 we will get the other two uh, once we fix this lambda 3 we can take any other number also here for lambda 3 we have we have free to choose lambda 3. So, with this combination we are getting for instance v 1 plus v 2 and minus v 3 times v 3 is equal to 0 and there are uh, there, there can be so many uh, possibilities here if we choose this lambda 3 as 1 we will get different uh, lambda 1 lambda 2 or any other number for this lambda 3 correspondingly this lambda 1 and lambda 2 will change. So, this is definitely not a unique representation we can have uh, uh, as many representations as possible here, but what it says that these vectors are linearly dependent and one of the relations here for their dependency is already here v 1 plus v 2 is equal to the 3 times v 3 uh, that is one uh, dependency we have we have. Uh, uh, shown 
in this case and uh, this set is linearly dependent. So, what we have learned today it is about the linear uh, independence of the vectors. Uh, this is again a very important topic uh, when, while considering the vector spaces which we will continue our discussion in the next lecture. And what was important that this linear combination of the vectors lambda 1 v 1 plus lambda 2 v 2 plus lambda n v n is equal to 0. If we out of this equation if we uh, get the unique solution as the lambda 1 is equal to lambda 2 is equal to lambda 3 is equal to lambda n is equal to 0, then we call that this set is linearly independent, because we cannot there is no dependency on the on the vectors on each other, because that is the only possibility coming out of this relation. So, we cannot uh, write any dependency among these vectors and that is the reason we call this linear independence that they are they are independent. Whenever we are getting a non-zero solution and that will be the case of, of infinitely many solutions. So, there we can have now many ways to write down these relations. So, one can be written in terms of the others and that is the case where what we call a linear uh, dependence. So, in that case those vectors will be linearly dependent. So, these are the references we have used. Uh, in this lecture and I thank you for your attention.